2021. What a strange year it's been already, hey? But what a time for innovation and opportunity. It's created the perfect space for us to rethink everything. COVID-19 may have disrupted many lives, but perhaps it was the break that we needed to take a look at the world from a distance and realise that the way we were living wasn't healthy for us, and it certainly wasn't healthy for our planet. Our society had become too fast-paced, with everyone trying to do too much and in the process creating a throwaway way of life that was toxic to ourselves and our planet. Fast food, fast fashion, faster trains, faster planes and faster lives focused on what's next rather than ever being present in the moment. A society where success was being measured on having no free time, working late, increased deadlines and juggling a work life that was anything but balanced. Nine to five had become eight to eight for many and stress, anxiety and a fear of failure was the fuel driving that fast lifestyle with more attention given to what is happening online than in reality. Is it any surprise that tablets and laptops were accidentally getting broken and kids were throwing our phones down the toilet just to get a look in? So now the world has put us in time out to think about our behaviour and create the much needed change that we need in the world. You only have to look at emotional evolution over the last 20 years to see how much we've grown. What was once considered acceptable behaviour is now being called to task, where sexual harassment was just boys being boys and casual racism was considered just having a laugh. We now stand united, well, mostly, that treating anyone in this manner is simply not okay. So isn't it then fascinating that with so much change happening so rapidly that the very centre of our evolution isn't keeping up? Of course, we know that this means changing the way that governments work and campaigning for new leg legislation. We already know that the Me Too movement made governments look at their policies again and communities look deeper into issues that have been previously overlooked. But I'm actually talking about focusing on the next generation. I'm talking about our education system. I think we can all agree that the teachers in the schools have done a tremendous job this past year of trying to keep our young people educated during a pandemic. Everything has changed with them and they've been incredible firefighters on the front line. But I've heard so many talking about going back to normal and this makes me really sad. We all know that the whole system needed a shake up and where does this feel like the opportunity to really shake things up? Most of the systems and structures that we have in place are out of date and they're out of touch with technology. Having seen the impact that the pandemic has had on education on a global scale, it's now really clear that this needs to change. But why stop with the technology? My own son wrote an essay in 2020 about the education system and how it wasn't focused on teaching our young people life skills. Because we all know that maths, English, science and all of the other topics at school are really useful. But how are you going to master the world without skills and emotional intelligence? Mental health was already becoming an increasing issue for our young people prior to 2020, but this has increased a hundredfold since then, with exams being cancelled and many feeling really fearful for what will happen when it comes to finding a job in the future. So let's take a look at that. What do jobs in the future look like? Only a year ago, teachers were using the old, if you don't work hard at school, you'll end up stacking supermarket shelves for a living. Well, bravo, miss. That's now one of the most secure jobs in the world. And I guess this is my point. We don't even know what the jobs of the next generation will look like. There certainly weren't any digital or tech courses when I was in education, which is really showing my age now. And with technology moving at the rate it has been, future life is a wonderful mystery that we can be excited to uncover. I remember being told in maths that I needed to learn everything because I wouldn't have a calculator in my pocket in the real world. Well, we pretty much all do now. And a clock, a timer, a dictionary, in fact, the whole World Wide Web. Going back to my son's essay, super proud mum, can you tell? He also mentioned the exams, which is a hot topic right now with his own exams being cancelled and replaced with teacher assessments this year. He wrote, the impact tests have on the future of a child is terrible. Why do we get judged if we get bad grades for the rest of our lives? Employers shouldn't only look at the grades that you got whilst under so much stress and pressure. Shouldn't the work the student did overall be more telling of their actual skill? And he's so right. We're taking young people at a time when they're already going through so much change in their bodies and putting the pressure on them to decide what they want to do for the rest of their lives. Most teenagers don't even know what they want for dinner. So now is time to reevaluate and innovate so that we can ensure that their emotional intelligence, their health, their heart and their mind become the priority. Because when you're healthy and balanced at the core, 
you can take on anything in the world. We are still educating young people to go into a job for life, which used to be the way of the world, sons following fathers into a company to climb the career ladder, whilst mum stays home and makes the house nice with dinner on the table for the men returning home. The world has changed, and it's now actually common for people to get, change careers several times before they work out who they are and what they want to do. Situations change, passions change. Just like taste buds mature, so do our thoughts and feelings and ambitions. The pressure for a 16 year old kid to sit exams with the whole of their future on their shoulders is insane. Imagine working under that kind of pressure. Do you think you would do the best you could do? We need a more robust system and a way of assessing our young people that isn't based on what they can remember and how they felt on one day. We need to teach them that the whole future doesn't rest on the choices and exams that you sit when you're just 16. The world of work is now more of a buffet than a sit down meal. You can try anything and everything until you find what makes you happy and hardly anyone I know is doing what they studied for as a young person. With access to so many different courses, learning opportunities and experiences, it's really time to create an education that's personalised, experiential and based on emotional intelligence, creating an environment which is student-led, with confident young people leading. We cannot possibly say that we're treating each student as an individual if we're not allowing them to take a course that they're absolutely passionate about just because their grade in another subject was one below the access point. We know that learning environments thrive with passionate students rather than those that simply meet requirements. So let's ask businesses if they would rather employ a person who has passion and is emphatic about their business than one who simply has the right grades on a piece of paper. You can mentor an enthusiastic student that's excited to come to work. And if a young person is passionate about anything, surely we should nurture that and support them with as many opportunities as humanly possible. So let's innovate education. Let's create a think tank that doesn't just involve adults sitting around a table deciding what children and young people should have. Let's get three generations involved with our young people at the heart and ask them what they need. Let's teach them about health compassion, connection and community so that they can grow into the next generation of leaders as kind and considerate human beings that are focused on nourishing and supporting each other. Let's create a world with health at the heart of the economy where wealth is measured by connection and purpose. It's time for us to change and 2021 has given us the perfect storm to create a world that we want to live in now with our young people at the heart. So let's not waste that opportunity. In order to make our education system more robust, we must focus our attention on the teaching staff and ensure that they have access to everything they need to support their students, that they aren't overworked, underpaid and stressed out. Because if we invest in our teachers' development, mental health and well-being and ensure that they're the best versions of themselves, they'll flourish. And so will the students that they're supporting. We know that they didn't get into teaching to be bogged down by red tape and paperwork. They got into teaching to be hands-on to inspire and educate and nourish students, but they need that nourishment too. Because how can they be expected to keep up with the rates of change without access to development themselves? Just like our computers and phones need regular updates, so do our teachers, to ensure that they're running efficiently and have the latest information on the topics that they're teaching. Let's make their mental health and wellbeing the priority and, and take away the fear factor of results-driven teaching. And the results then will almost definitely improve holistically anyway. Let's create an education system that allows young people to flourish, turning their passion into learning and supporting the different styles, because let's be honest, it's not a one size fits all scenario. Let's make lessons fully interactive and hands on, giving our young people autonomy of the way that they learn, present and innovate. Let's shake up the curriculum to incorporate alternative subjects that focus on life skills, mental health and well-being. Let's include lessons on dealing with real life, like managing your finances, growing your own food, ethics, sustainability, and the importance of social impact on our communities, because if our communities can flourish, then so can all of us. Let's show young people that equality is vital and that balance in the world is necessary, because I want my children to live in a world where there is no poverty, where those that have abundance take responsibility for those that have nothing, where we all take responsibility for one another and where kindness becomes the beating heart of every community where community service becomes a badge of honour rather than a punishment. In order to do this, we must first change how we teach them to measure success, because currently we're teaching them to think that success is measured in money, possessions and, and position, when we all know that this can lead to pressure, stress and anxiety. 
that I mentioned at the very start. Working eight till eight, six days a week is not living a successful life, unless doing it makes you happy. Technology is supposed to make our lives more effortless, not turn us into work machines that can access our emails 24 hours, seven days a week. Work should be a vocation that supports our life. We need to teach them that passion, purpose, health, love and happiness is what success looks like if we're going to change the world. And it's definitely time to change the world right now. So let's stop talking and take action. Let's talk to our children and ask them what they want to see changed. And then we need to invite our teachers and our friends and our family to join in the discussion and ask them all what education they need. Because education isn't just for the young. Education is part of our ongoing life journey. Thank you.